Hello all and welcome to the lesson 4. It is on the remainder and factor theorems. The learning objectives are to evaluate functions by using synthetic substitution and to use the factor theorem to determine factors of polynomials. The keywords you'll come across are synthetic substitution and depressed polynomial. Synthetic substitution, we have already come across this, will be used to uh, solve the remainder theorem. Depressed polynomial, we will come across this term in the factor theorem and I will explain you over there. So now let's go to the first example. We need to find the remainder using synthetic substitution. Now over here, this f of minus, you know, they have given the f of minus 3. The function is given. So you can solve it directly by substituting instead of x as minus 3. Okay, the way is very simple. Now over here, instead of x, you need to substitute minus 3, the whole power 4. Everything else remains the same. Plus 3 into minus 3, the whole square, minus 15 into minus 3, plus 9. Now, if you do not have a calculator, taking it to the power 4, square, adding, subtracting would take a long time. Since you have calculator, it is very easy to find it. You can easily do that. But otherwise, synthetic substitution would be much, much better way. Now, you can see over here, x is equal to minus 3, right? So, what exactly happens is, here, this comes inside. So, the, fa the, uh, the term would be x plus 3. So, let's do the synthetic substitution. f of x divided by whatever is the remainder over here. Sorry, whatever is the term given over here, it will be plus 3. Okay? Now, when we do synthetic substitution, we have to change the sign, isn't it? So, in this remainder theorem, you can directly take the answer over here. So, if you're doing synthetic substitution, you can directly take minus 3. And now, the coefficients of these. Minus 2 is for x, 4. x to the power 4. There is nothing cubed, so it's 0. Then 3, minus 15, and 9. Next is starting the synthetic division. You need to bring this down, the first term. Bring it down as it is, multiply with this term, and over here you write it. That would be plus 6. Negative times negative is positive. Add them up, and you will get 6. Now, same thing is continued. Now, write over here, negative 18. Add them up, right? Multiply over here. Write it over here, 45. Add it, 30. And 30 times minus 3 is minus 90. The answer you get is negative 81. So, synthetic substitution gives you the same answer if you had substituted this minus 3 over here. You can check by substituting this minus 3 over here. The answer would be the same. But if you didn't have a calculator, synthetic substitution would be much easier. Now, since you have the calculator, it's up to you. You can easily do any of the methods which are comfortable. The more, more easier method would be direct substitution and getting the answer. Now, um, going on to the next topic, the remainder theorem problem itself, where is it used practically? Now, let's apply the re remainder theorem. Now, there's a real-world problem where the total production of eggs in billions in the United States can be modeled by the function f of x equals 0.007x to the power 3 minus 0.149x squared plus 1.534x plus 84.755. Now here, this is important. When x is the number of years since 2000, so now if they ask you, and uh, they have told, predict the total production of x in 2025. Now this is very important. If they ask you 2025, you need to do 2025 minus 2000. Why? The x value will be 25 over year because any years after 2000 is only considered for this equation. It's not going to predict anything before 2000, since 2000. So here, this is important. Now, over here, since they ask you 2025, you need to subtract 2000 and you'll get the answer 25. Now here, this means X is basically what X value you're finding is 25. That is F of 25. So you can do it in synthetic division or you can do it in calculator. Remember, for synthetic division, the sign over here as it is will be 25 itself. 
Now write the coefficients over here, all the coefficients, and you can do the synthetic division. Now over here it is, uh, you know, these numbers are difficult. You need a calculator. You need to multiply this with this. You'll get over here, add them up. So this is the answer, 139.355. Or if you just apply over here 25, sorry. Now if you apply 25, I would like, I would ask you all to do this. Try applying 25 over here. Instead of x, it'll be 0 0.007. 25 the whole cube same way put over here x and wherever x is they put 25 and then check the answer it must be the same we will do it now all you need to do is 0 0.007 into 25 cube minus 0 0.149 x squared that is 25 squared plus 1.534 into 25 then lastly plus 84.755 so the answer over here is 139.355 now there is one more important thing the eggs are in terms of billions so whatever the answer we get is in billions so in the year now if you substitute 25 whatever answer you get is the number of eggs that will be produced in year 2025 so if you're not understanding the synthetic division, you can always remember, just find the x value. What is the x from 2025 to 2000? It's 25. Substitute the x instead of, uh, you know, in the, in the given function. Over here will be, x will be 25. And then solve, that would be the remainder. That would be the answer. The last topic in this lesson is the factor theorem. We will be using the factor theorem to solve this. Show that x plus 8 is a factor of 2x cubed plus 15x squared minus 11x minus 24. Then find the remaining factors of the polynomials. Now, here we have this. What they're asking is, this is the given uh, polynomial equation. You need to show that this is a factor. It is hard to understand in equations. I will just give you a simple example. Let's take a number, say, 24, okay? Now, they are asking to show if 8 is a factor of 24. You, can you write 8 in terms of multiple of some other number equals 24? All you need to do is divide. 24 divided by 8, what happens? 24 divided by 8 is 3. So the answer is 3. Now, I know 3 times 8 is also 24. So this is basically it. If it is divisible and the remainder is 0, when I divide 24 uh, by 8, what is the remainder? It's 0. There's no decimal. It's a whole number over here. So that means you will, you will have no remainder. There is 0 remainder and it is a factor. Same way now, you need to divide this by x plus 8. Now when you divide this, the remainder is 0. This is a factor and whatever this is a factor okay and whatever the answer you get when the remainder is zero is basically a depressed polynomial because whatever you're dividing with is a factor okay that is the thing now this is what we are trying to do divide let's see over here one by one this is again synthetic substitution very simple write all the coefficients we have done this now if you're confused with synthetic division go back to the synthetic division listen uh, it's it's one of the lesson in the last module at the end. So please watch that and then continue this. Now here, take x to the other side. It'll be minus 8 and write the coefficients. And now this comes down to multiply it with negative 8. Answer is 16. Add them up. It'll be minus 1. Multiply with 8. You'll get 8 over here. Positive 8. Add them up. You will get 3. Minus 3, sorry. Times minus 8 is positive 24. Add them. Uh, the remainder is zero now if the remainder is zero then this term is a factor over here whatever is the sign sign must be changed when you're solving in synthetic division why because x plus 8 make it equal to zero what is x is equal to minus 8 so minus 8 is used x value now what next over here the this is a factor theorem you got the remainder is zero that means x plus 8 is a factor 
Now, you know, 2x cubed plus 15x square minus 11x minus 24 can be factored how? The, uh, the quotient, whatever the quotient you get. That is 2, over here you start with constant x, x square. So, it is 2x square minus x minus 3. So, this is multiplied with this in order to get this. So, if you multiply these both, you will get the answer. You can try this by you know uh, distributive property if you multiply this first term will be 2x cube and then you need to solve the remaining terms you will get this answer so this is the depressed polynomial which is the depressed poly polynomial after when you divide a factor when you divide the factor whatever the answer you get the quotient now you can if you want factor this further you're just simplifying this now if you're multiplying this you're going to get the same answer we have factored this out factoring um, is already learned we have already seen few of the factoring problems so same concept is used if you want i'll just solve this one over here 2x squared minus x minus 3. so there are various ways to factor one way is calculator mode 5 3. If you're not using mode 53, you need to find a value in order to, uh, you know, when you multiply these two, 2 times 3, it will be minus 6 over here. 2 times minus 3 is 6. When you multiply two terms, you must get the answer. When you add them, you must have minus 1. So you need to think of two terms that will give you that. So here, since your answer is 6, it can be either... 6 times 1 or 1 times 6 or it can be 2 times 3 or 3 times 1. So obviously the answer will be 2 times 3. Why? Because you need to add them and the answer must be minus 1. Let's take 3 and 2 and now let's put minus over here. Minus 3 times 2 is minus 6 and when you add them you'll get minus 1. So these are the two factors. You can split this minus 3x plus 2x minus 3 and now you can remove the factors out that is x is removed over here you will have 2x minus 3 and over here you're removing nothing basically so it is just 1 2x minus 3 now you can see these two terms are the same so what is gone it will be x plus 1 times 2x minus 3 so this is how we get it if you're not using the calculator if you're using the calculator it is more 5 3 we have solved many problems but you will get x is equal to it will be like this x is equal to some term okay so it will be uh, minus so it will be plus 3 by 2 okay so what you must do is you need to solve this take the x2 to the other side it will be 2x equals 3 and bring this to the other side 2x minus 3 is equal to zero so 2x minus 3 would be the answer here it would be just x is equal to minus 1 bring it inside x plus 1 so these would be the two terms whichever method is comfortable the calculator is very easy obviously you can do that and then just rearrange and write them and now you can write the factors all the factors of this particular thing is x plus 8 2x minus 3 and x plus 1 there is one last thing if you are really confused with all this method and you you are blanked out in the exam and they have told whether this is a factor, you can do one thing, multiply all the terms. Obviously, this term must be there in the option. You will have four options, right? Multiply it. Binomial, you can use the FOIL method. Multiply this, 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 this. We have done binomial multiplication of poly, uh, uh, binomial or polynomial multiplication is already done in the previous lessons. Do multiply, uh, you will get one answer, then multiply it with x plus 1. The answer must be this. Whichever will give you this uh, function in the question is your correct answer. But the problem is, there will be four options, A, B, C, D. You need to do all of them. First, see which has all x plus 8 factor. That must be there. If one option doesn't have, ignore that. Then you will have three options and you need to solve them. Multiply all of them. And check whether you're getting this answer. If you get that, that's the answer. So that is it in this lesson. It's a very short lesson. If you have any doubts, please do post them in the chat. I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. Happy learning and all the best for your studies.